Good morning. 4.30, it's about 12 degrees out. I'm gonna get an early run at it because I'm gonna switch locations today and go try to catch some crappy and win this tournament. So, load it up. Um, gonna take a few supplies out, fill up some propane and a few other things this morning and then try to catch some crappy. Got one. Okay, 14 and a half going back. There you go. Got one. All right, another 15 going back. There you go. Got one. All right, got another 15 incher going back. All right, guys, I finally found the crappie. Long, long, hard day. A lot of hard work. This is the fourth lake I've been on. I just lost three good ones in the hole, but I caught five for six good ones, too. I'm horsing them. You can't horse them like that, especially around the hole. It's a good one here. Oh, he just touched it touched it. I think he'll bite again. Yeah, here he comes. Ripped it right out of his face. Sometimes you can get them back if you hit the bottom. Yep, yep, here he comes hot. That time he ate. So we got another good one on. I'm not gonna horse this guy. We're gonna give him some drag, play him out. They just got shoulders on him in this lake. They're absolute tanks. I don't think I could use this one, no. Wow, that's a crappy fighting like that. I mean, it's another giant crappy. Look at that. Got him on the Castmaster Rattlemaster in Wonder Bread. Giant crappy. I'm using the Savant rod. It's really, really nice. But I'll measure him up. Yeah, he goes 15 even. Can't use him. Actually, I got to find out what my smallest is. I'll find out what I need for sizes in this tournament. I got a 15, a 15, and a 14 and a half. Shoot, I could have used that last one. Dang it. Now I gotta catch another. They don't like a ton of movement, but if they see something fall and fall into the mud, they're coming over to investigate. I got a soft bottom here. It's like 10, 11 foot tops. We got a looker on the side. This could be another big one. I type my drag a little bit to make sure I get a good hook set. Yeah, that looks like a chunk coming in. We're going to keep this elevated. Got two coming. They're pretty far now. One's eight foot away. They kind of went dead. So I'm going to look around. I hate to move much because it's so loud right now. All right, I see some at 70. There's a couple in the wheelhouse still. There's some behind us. Man, maybe I'll just stay put. Hopefully they come in. There's no snow on the ice. The ice is thin. It's porous, so... Everything's super loud. I hate to even talk to you guys right now because I could see fish going away. But sometimes you got to move to get a little closer to them. We're running out of daylight here and I got a long snowmobile ride back to camp. Yeah, let's move ahead. We're going to make a short move, just try to get on some new fish since we're running low on time. I hate to make the move as quiet as it is, but I think we kind of have to right now to catch one. Okay, 
Hopefully, we don't scare too many. Every once in a while, you can scare them in. scared them but they're not far we might get a chance at them they're like 40 feet ahead go see if I can scare them back this way They did not like that. That might have been a bad move. giant guys. I don't know if you can see me catch that, but I got that on the Rattlemaster. It's another in that 15 range. It's a blimp. All right, another 15 going back. There he goes. All right, so I got all 15s right now. I need some big ones. Another big one.
that one's gonna be like 14 and a half. We can't use them, but look at how solid and big that fish is. Yep. Let's get him back. We are smashing them, smashing the big crappy. Last day of the tournament's tomorrow. I was in like last place before an hour ago. So staging an epic comeback. The comeback of epic proportions. Bring you guys over here. I don't know if there's still fish here or not. But not a bad school to be on. All 15s are close to it. What is going on here? Twist it up. Yeah. I want to drill another hole so I don't have to take that live scope pole out, but I'm afraid to drill. I don't want to scare these fish away. I feel like I got away with one getting that one hole in. This looks like a bigger one down bottom. I'm going to go for him. A big school 50 feet away. We might have to go get them. I'll take whatever I can get right now, guys. I ain't proud. It's one on bottom, I can't tell the size of it. I'm in 12 foot of water. They're not active at all. You gotta get them right in, the, right in their face. I don't know if it's because it's dark or what. This guy's all over it. It doesn't look big. Got him. Yeah, he feels like he might have some small shoulders. Oh, Jesus, look at that. That's a giant pumpkin from Maine. He did have shoulders. Wow. That's a big one. Cool. I'll show you guys that one in a minute. Good bite. Real nice bite. I don't know. It might be a perch. Nah. Ah, a little crappy. Little guy. All right, I'm in one's face right now. Got him. Little guy. Not the droid we're looking for. I'm going to try to drop this before I let him go. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to go back to the snowmobile and we'll see if See if they calm down over there and we can catch a couple before we go. But we are super happy with what we have from what we started the day with. I'll be back for you guys. Can you guys see me? Yeah, they're there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the fish catching period of this video. It wasn't very long. I didn't really have a lot to film. It was an absolute struggle today. Uh, high winds and just bluebird sky and they weren't biting and there was people all over the spot I wanted to catch them at so had to improvise and came to a place I fished like 20 years ago everybody's been telling me it's dead and first drop 14 and three quarters it was awesome so I'm gonna get picked up gotta go load up the snowmobile in the trailer stop fuel up the truck fuel up the snowmobile and then I got a long ride into where I'm staying and uh Stay tuned for that portion of the video. 
for the camping part of the video. I kind of want to cook a really nice meal tonight in that oven, but we'll see what time it is when I get back there. It's 6 o'clock right now. I won't be getting off the lake for another half hour probably. All right, made it back. That's quite a trail ride in. It's a bomb of a ride. A long ride. But I'm doing good. Made it in. We're doing okay. I'm going to... I'm gonna fill up the generator with some fuel and then I'm gonna run the generator tonight to charge all the batteries. Um, it's mostly the live scope, otherwise I'd be okay. But since I'm gonna run it anyway, I might just as well charge up my Milwaukee batteries and my power bank is, that's full. So yeah, so yeah, happy to be back. It's uh, 7.30, so I left here at 4.30, so that's a good hard day of work right there. People say fishing's just fun, but I guess it's just how you go at it, you know, that's, uh, what is that, 15 straight hours of going hard. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, how the day went, because I didn't film a lot of it. Yeah, so I'll talk more about that later. I'm going to get camp ship shape right now. It looks like Reboot, my buddies from Reboot were here today and they left me a little present out there. I see a bag of Doritos and a sun kiss. That's pretty funny. I didn't know, I knew they'd leave me something. They're great guys. I'm super bummed I didn't get a chance to fish with Reboot today. I didn't know they were coming in or I would have, I actually would have changed my plans even as, as competitive as I am. I would have changed my plans for those guys. But um, as I was pulling out this morning, Danny pulled in just behind me. He actually saw me pulling out and he's like, that was freaking Joe right there. And he thought maybe the wind was gonna be too much for me. But in reality, the wind wasn't because I went eight wind all day. Whereas if I stayed here, I would have been fine. So I missed fishing with Reboot today. That's a wicked bummer. Um, they, they hammered them. They caught them really well with pike. They don't feed them. I'll fish these pike for like a week straight. And I'll fish these pike for like a week straight. And it's super interesting to see, you know, that they don't feed every day. So two days ago, Sean came in and the males were all feeding. We had six or eight bites and they were all males, you know, in that six to eight pound range. And then yesterday they did not feed at all. So... I had a pretty good feeling that they were going to feed today um, with the storm coming in tonight. And there's a pretty good chance they feed the next couple days too. But the boys at Reboot caught two slobs. They got two uh, over 39 inches today, which are giants. Um, so that's pretty awesome. I'm super happy for those guys. You know, if you if you guys are new new-ish to my channel and you don't know Reboot, it's my absolute favorite veterans group. It's just about getting guys rebooted out into the outdoors. How in the hell do you work this Obama rig? I'll tell you how you work this. You take it off. Freaking man. Obama. People. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. We're gonna be baking something tonight. All right, we're gonna do a mozzarella and stuffed shells tonight. 
with some tomato basil sauce. Just enough to coat it. Coat the pan. Then do a layer of cheese. Then some stuffed shells that I brought from home. shells that I made at home. Froze for the trip. I believe that. There's seven, so there's enough for everybody, plus one. Then we're gonna put some more sauce on top of those. Yeah, drown them pretty good. We don't need to have a half a jar of sauce left, do we? Then it needs a layer of cheese on top. Cover it with some aluminum foil. If you look on the ends of this roll, there's a push tab right there. And there's another one on this side. How old were you today when you learned that you could push those two push tabs? Then you just pull on it and the whole roll stays in there and doesn't come out because those push tabs are holding it. Little cooking tip for you. We're gonna cover that baby up. It might be boiling, so we want to cover it pretty tight. Beautiful. Then into the oven she goes, whether it's hot enough or not, because... Oh, shit. Ah. Oh. That's trouble. That's trouble. We got some technical difficulties going on with my oven. It looked like the sidewall pushed out enough so the grate fell. I'm glad it didn't do it with this on there boiling, but it's a little too hot right now to readjust. So I gotta, I gotta think for a minute, wait. I could bring it outside and set it on the ice. Oh, you know what? Before we send that thing in the oven, I forgot to spice it up a little bit. So let's give it some oregano, basil, that's all we got, that's all it needs. Sweet basil. Could use some garlic, but I don't think I brought any. No, parsley, but I don't think parsley is anything really, other than just a leaf. So yeah, I'll be pretty damn tired tonight by the time this meal's cooked and I get that thing driven right into me, but I know one thing, I earned my pillow today. If I had a really good woman 
this meal would be ready by the time I got done fishing today and got back here. But I don't, so I gotta make it myself. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> but yeah, she's cooking now. She's a little bit over 200. It's, a, it's warmer in there than this meter says. I found that out. But we're gonna cook that. I'll, maybe I'll just set this on top to warm that bread. It might even cook up, there, up top there. I don't know. I never tried that. But yeah, so the fishing today was, uh, it was pretty harsh. Pretty brutal. I'm in a crappy tournament. If you guys have been watching the channel lately, you you know that. And, um, wow, that's bright. So yeah, I'm in a crappy tournament and it's nationwide and it's your three biggest crappy by length. And I've been putting up some monster numbers like averaging like 16 or just under 16 inches and got my tail handed to me a couple weeks by uh, some boys out in southern Iowa, they're on some kind of reservoir or farm pond where they're catching 16 and 3 quarter and 17 inches, which are huge. They're not much for fish, they don't have any shoulders on them, and they don't look like they even have a, much meat on them, but they're long, and they got a big long nose on them. So in a, in a length tournament, that's better. If it was a weight tournament, or if this was a 10 fish tournament, I think I'd be handing it to them because I've just caught so many. 15 and a half, 15 and three quarters, up to 16 and a quarter inch crappy. But I went into this week in last place. Um, I might have been pretty close to the bottom this week with today and tomorrow's the last day of the tournament. And I, I woke up super early in the morning and just wasn't settling with me that I didn't give it my best effort this week. And so I said, well, I got to leave this place because this place has crappy. It's got millions of crappy, but they're not, they're not big at all here historically, or you just can't pick through enough to get, you got to have 15 pluses in this tournament, I think. So I think in Maine, you got to have a 15 inch average just to be high, highly respectable. And that's with a bump board, you know, legit, legit weight in. So. I went to a spot where I've been hitting them pretty good lately, some big ones, and it was covered up in boys from Vermont. There was uh, six boys from Vermont out there. All of them had live scopes. They had buckets. They were sneaking up on the fish. These boys really knew what they were doing. And the fish really weren't there. You know, they, they'd already moved on. I know there's been a bucket brigade of a guy and his son or a guide that go out with a biologist and they've been filling up buckets of these crappy for the last couple of weeks and taking them and I think they're worried about the spot from because I'm fishing it or whatever but if they're taking buckets out of there and so anyway there weren't any fish there and I looked and I looked and I looked miles you know up lake down lake in out I searched forever drilled a thousand holes went through a couple batteries and never really found them so I don't know where they are, it's a mystery. I know they're not all dead, but quite a few are. So then I went to another lake that I thought I was starting to figure out, but I'd never found the crappie there. And I, I searched all over a new basin and never found them there. I found a bunch of white perch. I found one small school, a small crappie, and I, so I left them. Then I went to another lake that has historically some really big ones. Now, I know it's been getting hit hard lately. My good buddy Wayne was there earlier this season. He said there were some younger fellas or a group of guys there that were keeping all the big ones and throwing the little ones back, which is like the worst thing you could do, but it's their prerogative. So I couldn't get access to that pond because they changed the access to it. Uh, they blocked off like the trail, the road to get in. And I could have asked, but uh, there were two guys coming out of there as I was going in and so I just left it and I was starting to come back and kind of give up on the day and you know accept the loss but that just doesn't settle with me very well and even though I was dead tired I was hungry and I knew I had a long snowmobile ride and 
had to unload the trailer and unload the snowmobile and cook dinner tonight and everything. I had an hour left of daylight, so I drove past where I needed to come to get here. I went to a, a lake that I used to catch pretty good crappy in before I even knew what I was doing. But all my friends this year have been telling me there's no more crappy in it and it's not fishing well and it's not what it used to be and all, you know, they've got it pretty negative, but I just couldn't believe that. It's just too good of a lake. So I went over, I unloaded, ran down lake to the spot I used to catch them and where I found them in the past and drilled a hole to look for them with a forward facing sonar. And sure enough, there was one like within 10 feet and I dropped down he came in eight, it was 14 and three quarters. So boom, there we go. New biggest fish for my three this week. And then I proceeded to hit about 10, 15 inches on the number. And another 10, probably just under 15, you know, 13 and three quarters to 14 and a half. All of them just big, thick shoulders on a meaty. And you guys got to see a little bit of that footage. I'll show you the three 15s that I weighed in. And I ended up going from last place to first place. Um, so I'm at 45 inches, which is what I call respectable. You know, 15 average is respectable. I've weighed in, I think I've weighed in in this tournament in four weeks. All but like two fish have been over 15 inches with three being over 16 inches. So I'm, I'm super happy that I still got that competitive drive in me and to even when I'm tired and hungry and you know beat down all day to go check a spot go check a lake unload knowing that I had to reload I'd be coming off that lake after dark have to load up have to get fuel have to get propane and then still drive to the location to unload so I could come to where I'm set up for camp so so I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself, to be honest with you. It's all right to say that every once in a while. You know, as, as long as you're humble at heart, I'm proud that I still got that drive at my age. And, and you know, there's not a huge prizes in this, in this tournament, I don't think. But it's just a matter if you can win or lose, you know. And, and second, third, fourth place, you know, is nice. But if you're not first, you're last. So, so I'm happy about that. It's not over yet, there's tomorrow. And then, you know, I missed out on a big window to catch some giant pike today. And my buddies came out and caught some giant pike right out here. And I think that window is gonna be open for another day and a half. But the tournament ends tomorrow and I, I probably have a good enough lead. I, I got like a four inch lead on the next guy. And I think it's my buddy CJ and Anna, both are like three and a half or four inches behind me. But you never know, you know, if somebody's on some Iowa pond or Minnesota or Wisconsin or, you know, there's a lot of awesome anglers out there in some really good states that can get on a, a big school of crappie. So I think with the last day of the tournament for the year and for the week, I'm going to go try to catch a slob where I was fishing this afternoon. You know, not upgrade by half inch here or there. I think I'm going to try to go win the entire overall tournament. I, my best three are like 48 and a half inches right now and if I could pop an 18 or a 17 I think that'll put me in the lead for the entire overall even over those Iowa boys that, that are on that long nose pond so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow I'm going to start the day fishing crappy I just love doing it and I might finish the day on pike I don't know what I might finish the day on crappy but that's what I'm going to do tomorrow and that's that's the recap for today. Dinner's cooking. We're well over 300 now in there. I'm going to just open it up, make sure we're not boiling and probably smoking, but... Oh yeah, she's cooking. I was like, yeah, that'll do it. That's what I smelled. But I thought that was the funniest thing. But yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> so if you guys ever get like a bag of salmon, count how many are in there and count how many you take out so you don't end up with one in midsummer underneath your seat <laughs> but yeah that was uh that was crazy yeah but really appreciate you guys tuning in for this uh for this live i'll go back and and read a bunch of the the comments and stuff andrew lassen good to see you buddy that's awesome good to see you on here but yeah well uh 
I'll get back and read these comments and stuff. Um, I'm going to check on dinner. You guys want to check on dinner with me? I don't have, like, a hot pad because I, I forgot I'd be baking. But let's check on it. We're going to open up the oven. I can hear it boiling, so I know it's it's doing pretty good. Let's see if I... Whoa. Oh, look at the steam coming off that. Can you guys see that at home? This is going to be... This, I wish you guys could smell how good that smells. Yes. Yep, you guys are going to get the sneak peek into dinner. Oh, I forgot to cook the garlic bread. I was talking so much. Let's heat up that garlic bread real quick. That'll go... Oh, it might have cooked all right. Yeah, I guess it's good enough. It was cooking on top of that oven, too. All right, we're going to shut the oven off. We're going to dish out a pretty healthy serving because I think I earned my dinner plate and my pillow tonight from how today went. Oh, yeah. Shovel a couple of them. Oh, don't spill. What do you think? Two or three stuffed shells? Let's put three on there. That's eating pretty good in the ice fishing world right there. Piece of garlic bread, stuffed shells. You're going to see me turn into red beard after this meal, I bet. Ever since I grew my beard out, my shirts have been so much cleaner from like here down. So I got that going for me. But that looks piping hot. I'll show you guys dinner tonight. Stuffed shells. Oh, yeah, it's, it's piping hot. And some garlic toast. Garlic toast, I can, I can maybe shuffle a little bit of that. I'll take a bite of this and let you guys know if it's edible or not. I'll put some on, on the garlic bread. It looks hot. Take four. Nice. All of them. You got it. Don't forget the Charmin yet. Donnie's cookbook. Yeah, I got to get that together, guys, for you guys, for sure. Whoa. Yeah. That was worth the wait. Drive it right in. That's 100% driven right into me. You know it. This is awesome. I'm so stoked to have this meal. In my YouTube video that I shot earlier when I was making this meal, I said, I said, if I had a really good woman, this meal would have been made before I got done fishing. But I was just kidding. So don't take that the wrong way. Totally kidding. But I like to get a rise out of you guys. Dinner was awesome, guys. I'll see if I can pull a clip. I forgot to use the GoPro, but I shot a whole live video during all the dinner. So if you happen to catch that, you know how great dinner was. It was stuffed shells. But I'll try to pull a clip from it and show you guys what it was like. It was pretty amazing. Drove it right into me, so now I'm stuffed and and I'm tired. I definitely earned my, my meal tonight and earned my pillow, which is always a good thing. But that's going to do it for tonight. I'll see you guys in the morning. Thanks for tuning in.